So what do you consider or feel to be your most satisfying accomplishments as rabbi here? It's a good question. It's a good question. I didn't go into the rabbinate to say, to look for satisfying things. He went into the rabbinate to try and do things. Satisfaction is, uh, is a byproduct, just as happiness is a byproduct. Satisfaction would be, one, that I, I played a part mm -hmm. in reconciling what could have been a very, and was, a very serious split in the congregation. And I played some part, I hope an important part, in melding the two parts together so that it ended up as one congregation. By the time I left, other than for historical purpose, nobody said, your university, your McCall, it didn't exist anymore, okay? I did this in many ways. One was, in some ways, I had to use a, use a low prof profile. One was that being a Torontonian and having been at Betzeg before, I knew both sides of the argument, the, both, uh, the people on both sides. When I came in, I, call, I, may, I said at that time to the president of the congregation and and the vice president, I said, you people hired me, but you should know that I am the rabbi of the whole congregation. And they said, that's the way it should be. So that should stand on record as well. But having no, I called up, I called up, uh, without going into names, people who were floored by this, people who were aghast at it, and people who were very much, uh, very much supporters and Hasidim of Rabbi Rosenberg. But I called them up and I said, I want you to know I'm here. I had no part in the struggle and my task is to, is to serve you. And I regard it as a fortunate thing that we know each other. And I have to tell you a story, if, I, if you have a moment. And that's one of the outstanding moments. <laughs> it never appeared in the bulletin. It remained between two people, that other man and myself, until now. That other man was a very dignified man, nice man, who I don't know if he supported Rabbi, Rabbi Rosenberg per se, but he didn't like the whole atmosphere that was created. Naturally, when I came in, I came in, I was suspect. I was hired by the new era of people. And people were also suspect of any rabbi. This man lost a son, and he came to shul every morning. Prominent member of the congregation. Came to shul every morning. And after a few months, he said to me, Rabbi, after services, can I see you for a few minutes? I said, of course. We went into the study, and he said to me words to this effect. I don't remember the exact words, but to this effect. He said, Rabbi, I want you to know that when you came in, I was suspicious, and there was resentment. But I want you to know now that that is all gone and that I'm one of your congregants. And that was a very important thing for me to hear from this man. I never told anybody until now. Was there anything you feel uh, during your tenure that you felt was left unfinished? Yes, of course. Of course. Can I point it out now? I think in stating my position and keeping to it, I might have done it in a better way. 
secondly, while serving people at important times of their lives, whether it was for a good occasion, bad occasion, God forbid, that gave me the satisfaction that we were talking about. But I think back, unfortunately, you are loaded with so many that you just don't have, you just don't have the koyach. I don't mean the physical or mental koyach, but the spiritual koyach to handle everything as you should. And so I'm sure that there were people who felt that they were dealt with in a shorthanded fashion. So yes, I'm sorry that I didn't deal with everybody, but I didn't have really the staff that I wanted to have. I didn't have the staff that I wanted to have. And even some of the staff that I did have or one, were suddenly, without my knowledge, let go because I wanted to save $500 or $1,000, which was silly. One of the things that I regret that really hampered me and that I had not experienced in another congregation and that I didn't know when I took the position that that would be so was that I was not permitted to attend the board meetings. Um, in the other congregations, it was accepted that not only would I, would, I accept, attend, would I attend the board meeting, but I would give a certain amount of leadership there because they understood very well how can I be a leader of the congregation when many decisions are being made without my knowledge or without my input? And that's what happened here. And I must tell you that after a while that grew very frustrating. Uh, I, I, well, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Yeah.